Hello and welcome to my weekly writing Q&A. This week's writing question is from Rune Vikanson, who shared this via email. Um, he asks, I am plotting and planning the rest of my 90,000 word fantasy novel and it came to wonder about how to reach the pinch points and the three major plot points. Um, while reading your blog posts on the subject, I came to wonder how many minor setbacks would be psychologically tolerable for a reader before they put the book down. I mean, writers can always only, only throw in so many obstacles that the story never ends, that we never get to the first plot point or the first pinch point. But at some point, we've got to put the foot down and get on with it. So how many is acceptable? I'm afraid the answer might be it all depends on the story. But are there any pointers like with the percentile, when, what should be in what place, etc.? So I really like this question, um, <clears throat> but just to get us started, I will just really quickly define story structure as I teach it. And primarily how I teach it, it has to do with structural timing, which has to do ultimately with the pacing of a story. Um, I talk about dividing a story into eight equal parts and um, timing a major turning point roughly around each of those moments. And each one has its own specific you know, role within the development of the story. So he's talking specifically in this instance about the first plot point, which begins the first act around the 25% mark, and the first pinch point, which is a slightly smaller turning point around the 37% mark. And I think that he's right. It's like it does depend on the story. But more specifically, it depends on two considerations. And one of them is simply genre. Um, different genres want different pacing, basically. Um, say you're writing a thriller, you're going to want to have something happening, you know, as often as possible, maybe even on every page, versus say a, a literary story, which um, is probably going to be much more leisurely, where something might happen and you might spend chapters, you know, dissecting it or developing it or, or talking about the character's reaction to it. So it, it does depend on, on considerations such as those, which ultimately are about pacing. And the other thing to consider is the length of your story. So in a shorter form fiction, whether it's a short story or a movie, a two hour movie, or a relatively short novel, um, and what he's talking about is a 90,000 word fantasy, which is relatively short for that genre. So in a, in a shorter um, story, and the shorter the story it is, the more precise you're gonna want your timing to be, your structural timing of those turning points to be in order for the pacing to work throughout the story and to make sure you're not shortchanging any of the other sections in the story. If you're writing something that's longer, then um, you have a little more wiggle room. Um, it certainly does not have to be timed down to the percentile um, or the page or whatever. You've got more wiggle room to um, add more chapters in between things and develop them more where necessary. As long as the pacing works, that's what it all comes down to. You know, if it's feeling like it's dragging in certain areas or it's too rushed in other areas, that's probably a sign that the structural timing needs some tweaking. Um, but I think as far as, as, you know, adding in extra events in between the major turning points, um, again, in some stories, you have a turning point happening, you know, uh, noticeably on almost every page, certainly in every chapter. And in others, things take their time a little bit more. But there's, there is, so it's, it is about like knowing your audience and what they want um, and what they're likely to bear kind of within their expect expectations for the genre. But beyond that, it's, it's more about what makes sense within the story, what development is necessary it's certainly, you know, possible to flog a dead horse and, and throw in all this, these, these little turning points and events and complications when they're not really necessary because the main show of a story is always going to be the structural through line as defined by those main structural turning points. So you don't want to overshadow those. You need enough developments in between to logically get to each of those structural moments but they should be, you know, the, the main enchilada, as I call it, and the thing that, that, that readers are here for. Um, I, I have structurally analyzed many novels, mostly, where, like, there's lots of stuff happening, but it's hard to kind of find the actual major turning point. It gets lost 
and it's minimized in some respects and doesn't have that impact that you ideally like it to have within the story where there's like no mistaking that this is it and something important just happened. So anyway, basically you're just going to want to consider the needs of your genre and the length of your story and analyze your structural pacing based on both of those things. And that's, that's really what counts here. So I hope that's helpful. If you have a question about writing, leave it in the comments on YouTube or Instagram, and I will answer one next week.